Well, hey, everybody, I hope you're enjoying your Thanksgiving holiday. Got just a few minutes to talk about Frozen 2. This is, of course, the sequel to the cultural phenomenon that was 2013's Frozen, co-directed by Chris Buck and Jennifer Lee, and starring the voice talents of Adina Menzel and Kristen Bell. Once upon a time, the people of Arendelle established a treaty with the northern tribe of Northuldra, who lived in the Enchanted Forest. But at some point, everything went to shit, and they started killing each other. Fast forward to a few years after Elsa's coronation, and she somehow accidentally wakes the spirits up, and they are not happy. So Elsa, Anna, Olaf, Kristoff, and Sven must journey to the Enchanted Forest to set things right. So I really liked the original Frozen, I just rewatched it again, and it still holds up pretty well. Frozen 2... I also liked it, but not nearly as much. There is still a lot of good stuff here. The animation is just downright gorgeous. Even when you compare it to its predecessor, it's amazing how far they have come in just about six years. We still have the same characters that we all know and love with their respective voice actors who continue to do a great job of bringing them to life on the big screen. Elsa and Anna are together for a lot more of the movie this time around, so we get to see much more of their relationship as sisters, which is always nice. For some reason, a lot of writers tend to struggle with with writing siblings, so it's always nice to see a TV show or movie or whatever that actually understands how siblings work. I did enjoy the scene where Elsa kind of revisits brief little flashbacks from the first movie, and there's even a moment of self-deprecating humor in there where they poke fun at Let It Go. I got a kick out of that. I do think they made the right decision to not give Elsa a love interest in this movie, because honestly, I don't think she needs one. She's fine without it. Especially since the love story we do have with Kristoff and Anna, honestly, I can take it or leave it. There's a running gag where Kristoff keeps trying to propose and keeps fouling it up horribly because Anna keeps misunderstanding his intentions. And some of those bits were kind of funny, but there were a few of them where I was like, wow, that's how Anna interpreted that? That's a stretch. Olaf is around a lot more, and he is still hilarious. There is a great moment in this movie where he recaps the events of the first movie, and it's just so clever. It's very well done. And there are some new characters this time around. And that's about all I have to say about that, because, yeah, they really did not amount to much. They were there, but... That's it. They were just there. Unfortunately, the story was not nearly as good this time around. It is all over the place. It's unusually convoluted for a kid's movie. And I've heard some people say, oh, my five-year-old understood it just fine. Did they? Did they really? Or did they just not care because Olaf was funny? There's nothing wrong with that. That's perfectly fine. But let's just be honest about what's going on here. There was more than one moment in this movie where I just found myself asking, wait, why? And as great as it is for Elsa and Anna to get to spend more time together in this movie, by the end of the film, they're split up again. Why? And the funny thing is, this movie dumps a whole shit ton of lore on you about the Frozen universe, and if that was something you wanted out of a Frozen movie, boy did they give it to you. And yet, despite that, I still feel like there were some things that were not explained very well. And the ending, oh, I'm sorry, but that was a cop-out. I know it's a kid's movie, but just, without giving too much away, there is a point where Anna discovers something that happened in Arendelle's past, and she has to make a huge sacrifice in order to set it right. And to her credit, she's willing to do this without a moment's hesitation, really, because it's just the right thing to do, and good on her. But then they just kind of hand wave the sacrifice away, and it amounts to nothing, and I just... I did not dig that. And of course, I can't talk about a Frozen movie without talking about the music, which was fine, although, especially compared to the first movie, kind of unmemorable. Really, for me, there were only two songs that stood out. The first one was Into the Unknown, which seems to me to be this movie's attempt at recapturing the magic of Let It Go. Time will tell if it succeeds. I don't think Into the Unknown will become anywhere near the cultural phenomenon that Let It Go was, although I do expect there will be plenty of failed attempts at singing that song at karaoke. 
The other song that stood out to me for all the wrong reasons was Lost in the Woods, which is about Kristoff's failed attempts at proposing to Anna, which already I wasn't fully on board with, and it's a rock ballad. Like, as soon as that electric guitar came in, I'm like, wait, what? I mean, compared to the rest of the music in these two movies, it feels a bit out of place. And then the reindeer start doing a kind of visual parody of the Bohemian Rhapsody music video, and I'm just sitting there thinking, what in the hell is going on here? Like, did someone spike my soda? What is this? Is anyone else seeing this? No, no it's not just me? Okay. So overall, not as good as Frozen 1. The story is kind of a mess, but it's got really good visuals and enough humor to keep it afloat. If you were a fan of the first movie, I'd say this is worth at least a matinee. If you have kids, they'll eat it up. Now I should let you know, if you have not yet seen this movie, there is a post credit scene. And to get to that post credit scene, you will have to sit through a few songs in the end credits, one of which is Panic at the Disco's version of Into the Unknown. I know that's asking a lot, but if you can stick with it and just get through Panic at the Disco, I assure you the end credit scene is well worth it. And that's all I have to say about Frozen 2. Till next time, take care.